For the anti-hero Mike Tyson, it began as a love story. The romantic portrayal of how the elderly eccentric trainer liberated the boy from a reform school to educate him in the secrets of combat art won fans by the millions. And the boy paid it all off with a dressed down warrior persona and a string of sensational knockouts. True to the old man's prophecy, he became the youngest ever heavyweight champion and embarked on a path toward immortality. He's down again and in serious trouble. A path marked by hammer, gargantuan consumption and excess. A path made darker and more complicated with each shedding of the superstar's skin. A path that ended abruptly in Tokyo. With the once invincible destroyer forlornly searching for his lost mouth guard. He would never again be the same, but his public was still blinded by romance. For a long time, Lennox Lewis beat everyone but couldn't satisfy any. Despite many dominating performances, Americans considered him too cautious, especially for a big man, and well, too British, the un-Tyson. Self-inflicted wounds when he arrogantly let his guard down, years apart to two Buster Douglas class opponents, Oliver McCall and Hasim Rahman, weren't fully healed by emphatic revenges. The judges who gave him a draw when he clearly beat Evander Holyfield seemed to be reviewing him, not the fight. Through it all, Lewis kept getting up and getting better, determined to be recognized as the best of his time. And that could only happen if he fought Mike Tyson. And nothing, nothing would stand in the way of that quest. So last Saturday night, the faded shell of the former Comet met the less spectacular solid citizen for the heavyweight championship. And for ultimate superiority in the three-man round robin they have shared with Evander Holyfield. When Mike Tyson confirmed his instability at a bizarre press conference, major boxing states denied him a license. So a heavyweight championship fight became an outlaw event that wound up in the home of the Blues, Memphis, Tennessee, which wanted an economic jolt and a party. In the end, conventional wisdom dictated the conclusion of the saga. Lennox Lewis's victory was more than just the final coronation of the best heavyweight of his era. It was the emphatic triumph of excellence over exhibitionism, of competitiveness over carnal pleasure, of substance over style. It was the definitive destruction of the myth of Mike Tyson, and a statement on Lewis's now lost in the history of heavyweight boxing. Again, everyone, I'm Jim Lampley, along with HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. We talked for years about the possibility, so clearly did many of you. And last Saturday night, it finally took place. Mike Tyson's long-awaited opportunity to move back to the top of the heavyweight division, where his many fans thought he belonged. Lennox Lewis's chance to prove once and for all that Tyson was nothing more than a carefully preserved and marketed myth. Larry, in an overall sense, what took place in Memphis? Lennox Lewis gambled his reputation on one defining fight. And in winning that huge bet, he exposed an illusion, the Tyson of the 90s. Mike Tyson was such a force of nature in the 80s that he was able to sustain that image by raging through minor opposition for a decade. All the while, descending from the fictional story of a redeemed bad boy to a proudly unredeemable, troubled felon. In Memphis, Lewis made Tyson the minor opposition, and he established himself as one of the great heavyweights. As you're about to see, and later here in the studio, we'll have a conversation about the fight with Lewis himself and his increasingly legendary trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. Well, even in the final days, as the boxing world gathered in an environment so big fight exotic, it may as well have been this generation's Kinshasa Zaire, Skeptics speculated on what untoward event might knock the bout out again. But at 10.15 Central Time last Saturday, the two fighters finally exited their respective dressing rooms. 
So let's go back now to Memphis to hear how Fran Charles called the fight in company with Larry and George Foreman. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this world championship heavyweight bout between Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson. Lewis is 10 months older than Tyson. Tyson will turn 36 at the end of the month. And it's Lennox Lewis enjoying a 6-inch height advantage and a 13-inch reach advantage. When both fighters stepped on the scales, Lewis weighed nearly 15 more pounds than Tyson. Incidentally, both camps expected their fighters to come in at about 5 to 6 pounds lighter. Apparently, there was a problem with the scale. Five of the last seven Mike Tyson fights have ended in controversy. Rules of the bout now with unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. And now Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson will fight for 12 rounds using the rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case of an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Friend. This is the moment the crowd here at the Memphis Theory Arena has been waiting for. Here comes Iron Mike Tyson, born and raised in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, New York. For the first time in his 55 bout career, he will enter the ring as an underdog. Lewis is an 8-5 to five favorite. But when he enters the ring, Fran, he'll find out that he is surely the favorite in this crowd. And entering the ring, this fight has already exceeded the expectations of many just a short while ago. The city of Memphis learning on a trial and error basis. Tyson is the underdog because Lewis is the champion and because Lewis has fought more formidable opposition. In the last 11 years, Tyson has fought just one top heavyweight at Vander Holyfield and lost both times. And yet he has the style and the punch to make all that seem like rhetoric. Vintage Mike Tyson on his way to the ring. No robe, just a towel and black boots, no socks. We'll see if we'll see vintage Mike Tyson once the fight starts. The good thing about Tyson, he's filled with sweat. That's what you want your fighter to be, nice and wet before a fight. As you can see, there is a row of security guards lined up diagonally across the ring. These two fighters will remain separate until the first bell. I think it was probably Vince McMahon, the genius behind the World Wrestling Federation, who arranged all of this. There you get a good up-close look at the three-time heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis. We mentioned he comes in as the favorite. Lewis was hoping for participating in the World Cup soccer tournament. Many Brits electing to follow the soccer matches and rather than come over to Memphis. So Lewis's supporting cast may not be as strong as he likes. Yeah, but uh, you go around this city, I've been run into so many people speaking with that British accent that you would think there is no World Cup. Yeah, this town is loaded with the British. Lennox Lewis really made this fight happen after the fracas at the New York press conference when he was bitten by Tyson. He could easily have gotten out of it if he wanted to. He didn't want to. He sees this as an opportunity to confirm his place as the best heavyweight of the 90s. is a somewhat illicit fight in the sense that all the, the big boxing states 
didn't want it. And all of this security adds to that sense that this is a kind of an outlaw fight. I Adds think they the wanted drama. to do it. They were just too afraid to accept it, to get it. You cannot fault the planning. Everything coming off without a hitch as the fighters enter the ring. The heavyweight champion of the world now will go to his half of the ring. in championship fights. On this unique occasion for boxing, we have not one ring announcer, but two. Let's send it inside now to Jimmy Lennon Jr. and Michael Buffer. and a long-awaited, much-anticipated, featured bout of the evening. This bout coming away is brought to you by Lion Promotions, Main Events and Fight Night, Inc., in association with Prize Fight Promotions, as presented by the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser. Tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, we will turn the page to another chapter in the history book of boxing legends. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. 12 rounds of boxing for the linear, legitimate, and universally recognized undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this contest on the 10 points must system are from South Africa, Alfred Bukwana, from Thailand, Anik Hongtongkam, and from Belgium, Bob Logis. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from the United States, Eddie Cotton. All right, fans, here we go with the main. fans joining us around the world the time for talk is over the time to fight is here it's the time we've all been waiting for live from the pyramid in memphis it's fight time <laughs> introducing to you first the challenger on my right he is fighting out of the blue corner entering the ring wearing his traditional solid black trunks and hailing from Catskill, New York. He weighed in at 234 and one half pounds with a record of 49 wins, three losses, two no contests. He has 43 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the youngest man ever to win the heavyweight title, currently ranked the number one contender by the WBC. Please welcome tonight's challenger, the explosive two-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. And hiding out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with red letters, and officially weighing 249 and one quarter pounds. He captured Olympic gold in 1988. Now, as a professional, he has 39 victories, including 30 knockouts and three world titles. He has two defeats and a draw, all by way of rematch have been changed to victories, making him one of the few men in boxing history to have virtually defeated every man he has ever faced. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from London, England, presenting the three-time world champion, the linear, legitimate, and universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lenny!
get yourself together and start working your jam. You took all of the anger and slowed him down already by wrestling and tying him up. Okay? Just take your time. Don't let him fight the fight that he's trying to make you fight. Take your time. Get to work with your jam. Well if you hit him with the right hands and uppercut. Just slow Maybe two. If you can get two in, that's fine. Okay? But don't let this guy try to tie you out. Man. I'm telling him, I'm telling him, I'm telling him. Just stay cool. You we we cool. hollering at him, okay? Okay, just relax yourself, baby. That was a good round. Double you won the first round, okay? Double jab, I've been working on step up. I'm controlling the second jab. You got Every, every jab. time you get one, I love. Start using your face now. He's trying to load up with his right hands on that. He's going to try to come on top first and then uppercut, okay? Be fast, baby. Be fast. Tyson is paying some attention to his corner, which is something I didn't expect. Jabs will be very important throughout the fight. Lewis landed, throwing 23, Tyson throwing three. And now Eddie Cotton wards Lewis. And that's going to be hard for him to stop doing because Emmanuel Stewart has given Lewis the permission to keep holding and tying him up. He's not doing it out of desperation. He's doing it out of uh, instruction. Lewis with a big right uppercut. Tyson's still trying to figure out a way to get in. His footwork and his speed used to be such that he could easily get inside bigger guys. You know what he's doing? He's just got to wait a couple of rounds. Big guys get tired or quicker than the, the shorter guys. You just got to wait. Just keep your head moving and wait. There's a second body punch by Mike Tyson. Lewis pushing Tyson away also for the second time in this round. And delivers another solid uppercut. Listen to me. Remember I told you, you cannot let this man throw too many jabs at you without you coming back or something, right? Okay, look, you using your, you started using your face, but you quit jabbing. You have to be in this man's chest, you understand? Make this a, a very ugly fight now, okay? I want you right in. He's slowing down real bad. 35. 35, everyone. Left hand. Keep your hands Work up. Work your jab. The jab is pumping now. The jab is pumping. That's what you're waiting for. Right there. Keep your hands up, baby. Keep Fight the right masterpiece at round. You're on your way. No, please. Here you go. Here you You're go. on your way, baby. George, Lennox Lewis has been holding his hands very low. Is he inviting a disaster? Well, Tyson is real low. You got to put your hands down where your man is. is and he's not doing it. It's just that if you stay up too high, you can't get that shot in. That's the danger of fighting a taller guy. 
But he's doing an excellent job of out jabbing him now and being cautious. Tyson is desperate. Total, punch, total punches in round two, according to copy by punch that Lewis 22 of 40 for 55 percent. Tyson 7 of 35 for 20 percent. Going into this fight, everybody punch thought punch that punch Mike Tyson had the stronger jaw. He has certainly shown a strong jaw in this fight because he has taken some solid shots so far. He's allowing Lennox Lewis to just move around the ring and do whatever he wants. Tyson's got to start throwing his jab to Lennox Lewis's chest and stop trying to hit his head. That's a good body shot by Mike Tyson. He can get that right hand down there low and make it sound. He's coming on top with it sooner or later. Ronnie Shields told Tyson to make it an ugly fight. Is that because he thinks that Lewis has had, had his way from a, from a distance? Yeah, he wanted him to get closer. Don't make it look so pretty standing out there bobbing the weed. Get close. Make it raggedy. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. When we met with Shields, he told us he showed Tyson a lot of tapes of himself back in the 80s. There was a lot of head movement. He was all in balance, stop her, stop her, and he stop used her, his jab her, a lot her, more. And you see Lewis is putting his head on, hanging down on the boy's head. This could cause some problem with the referee, and I'm telling you. Excellent jab by Lewis, and a hold. This starts working on the back when a guy keeps leaning on you. Oh! Music by Tyson. Tyson comes up with there's a the left hook. And, there's, there's, a and, and there's a cut on the right eye of Tyson, it appears. And they butted head there for a second. Lewis got hurt that time also. Tyson blinking with the blood in his eye. Lewis calmly looking at his corner and saying, I've got it under control. The referee better get in there. You can't instruct him. You got to just brush your way right through. Dr. Ira Trocki in Tyson's corner will go to work on that cut. Listen to me. Get his nose. Enough. Listen to me. Okay, Mike. Listen Look, Mike. Give me you got to relax yourself. Give me yourself. a towel away from me. Give me a towel. Give me a towel. Give me a towel. Let me relax. Let me relax. Okay. Nice and relaxed. Now, Mike, look, listen to me. Now, look, you let this guy have his will on the outside. You understand? Don't let this man have his will on the outside. You got to be close to this man. You understand? You got to stay close. And you, when you get close, shoot your upper cousin and go to the body with this man. Okay? Use you your finger. He can't deal with nothing right coming to him. This fight should be over with if you do. You said you got to get yourself together. Drink. Just be with Chip, just to do this shit and do this. And shoot that damn up and some. The man is tired. Here's Lennox Lewis's jabs as he has his way from outside. And that first jab there may have caused the cut. Lewis averaging 25 jabs per round. When he throws that number, he's very dangerous. Stop him here. Stop him here. Stop him here. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has a fight score through three. Okay, Fred, 29 to 28, two rounds to one, Lennox Lewis. Fred, I just looked over at Eddie Cotton, and he signaled to me that the cut was caused by a punch, not a headbutt. So if this fight gets stopped because of that cut, Lennox wins on a TKO. In the first round, they thought Mike Tyson did a nice job getting inside, but in rounds two and three, just like you saw right there, Lennox stood on the outside, used that jab, and came up with some nice, solid right up. At this point in the fight, the bad boy of boxing is getting spanked by Lennox Lewis, but he is always dangerous. Lewis following the Holyfield blueprint, pushing Tyson back, leaning on Tyson, and right now, firing that right cross at will. 
Tyson gets close. Lennox Lewis changes and stops oh. everything. Folds his now, the, the, up. now there's blood apparently coming from Tyson's nose. The difference tonight is too much holding for Tyson. This guy's done too much holding. Lennox Lewis has been holding too much. George, he's also been punching the crap out of him. Tyson doesn't even know where he is about now. Better get desperate. Lennox Lewis told us that no matter what, Ronnie Shields spent eight weeks teaching Mike Tyson in Maui during his training camp that as soon as he got hit, he would revert to his natural instincts. And we see less bobbing and weaving and less jabbing from Tyson and Lewis measuring up. You know, Tyson is picking up the energy from this crowd. They're pulling for him. And sometimes when you're beaten, that's enough to bring you back in the picture. You know, there is an arrogance about Lennox Lewis that allows him to drop his hand sometimes. And no matter how hurt and slow Tyson is, he is a dangerous puncher. Lewis leads on Tyson, connects with a right hand. Tyson goes down, but Eddie Cotton says no knockdown. The force of Lewis on Tyson's back. Why wasn't that a knockdown, George? Looked like a knockdown to me. Looked like a clear knockdown. That's and he is. leaned on him, but that's not a foul, George, yeah, is it? Leaning. You got look at look. He's but why is that a foul? Back. But he's on his back. He's, he's leaning on his back. He hit him with a good right hand, but what's all the leaning? And we did a good job. So far, Lennox Lewis seems to be fighting Tyson and the referee, in my view. Lewis throwing 39 punches, connecting on 27 for 69 percent. In the fourth round, Tyson, five of 27. Tyson is just hoping for one good shot. One good shot. Emmanuel Stewart told Lennox, keep your hands up. Here's the guy who's not trying to jab anymore. He's not trying to win points. He's just looking for one shot, and Lewis, that long jab, stopped anything. Eddie Cotton with his hands on both fighters' chests as he pushes them away. Tyson just can't find the distance. Now he goes leaning on his head again. If he goes down by a shot, the referee is still going to get him. But he's low. Tyson's lowering his head. Tyson looks worn out. He is. And oh, tired. He is. Once again, Eddie Cotton is what. I don't know what this, what the champion is doing to deserve these kinds of calls from Eddie Cotton. A lot of people were concerned about some political calls from the referee, and right now, in my judgment, we're seeing some of it. Tyson bleeding now from both eyes. Get up, get up, get up. Lennox Lewis should never been playing around. He should have had him and jabbing him and pecking him. He should join, go on and lower the hammer on him and stop playing around with the jab. You got a man hurt, he's waiting to go, finish him out because you're just gonna get yourself in trouble waiting around for a good, a better shot.
Tyson is out of the fight, you don't want to let him back in the fight. Nice job. Step back. He blocked that left, that uppercut. Lennox Lewis is playing around too much. Put the right hand on the man. Hands up, champ! Hands up! When you play around a lot, that's when you get hurt. He's winning his fights hand down. Just won't throw that power shot. Lewis going almost exclusively to the jab here in this fifth round. Looking for opportunities to set up his right. Now Tyson jabs right back. A big round for Lewis. You got a dead man in front of you, and you still doing this. Just let that shit go. Let's fight it all the way. You gonna fuck around and let him catch you with some shit if you don't watch. This man is dead out there, but he wants to quit. And you out here playing. Hello. Give me all. Give me all you got. One round. Just give me. Just let me go hands. I just want your hands moving this round. Can you stay close to there and get your hands moving this round for me? Mike, you go out. You're fine. No, I need your hands moving. You get this. You got too much distance. You let this guy jab the hell out of you. You got to move your hands. Now we got to win this. Doing this. Doing this. The man said that let this shit go. Right hand over top. Right hand up a cut. Stay alert, man. Any lower this fight going, this man is dangerous. You better get him out of here. Goddamn right. Let us be dickers. Here's the right hand that opened the eye of tight the, the left no. eye of Tyson. Emmanuel Stewart imploring his fighter to take care of business, echoing the sentiments of George Foreman. Now Tyson should take a round off now. Let this guy move into him a little bit. You don't need to chase a puncher around all night like that. Lewis again landing at will. In the fifth round, 31 of 50 for 62%. Tyson throwing just 17 shots, landing six according to CompuBox. That right hand hurt Tyson that time. Tyson is hurt. Better do something. Lewis, another strong overhead right. Okay, stop pushing, stop pushing. Get up, get up, get up. Lewis is doing, he's cuffing, he's not dropping his head at all. Keeping his head up high so Tyson, no matter how hard he throws, he can't reach up there. That's right. That's what you don't want to do is start bending low so that that guy can hit you with those right hands. Tyson looks very tired. You better believe he's tired and he's hurt. But he's a puncher. Just 19 rounds of boxing for Mike Tyson in his six previous fights over the last five years. The lack of stamina may be showing up. Good punch that shook Lewis. But it's a punch that should never have happened. If he listened to his corner and gets this fight over, he doesn't get punched at all. Lennox Lewis shouldn't be, be getting punched at all. I thought that was might have been Tyson's best shot so far. But Lewis took it. Oh, and he brought something back, too. Swelling now developing under the left eye of Lennox Lewis. Now you slice, Tyson slows down, don't charge him, just slow down, keep your head moving, get your win for the second half of this fight. Then you can do better. It's very hot in this arena, very hot. And the big guys will start to get tired anyway.
and from him. Keep shooting up because what is this coming up? Seven feet. There's no way to where this man should be in here this long. And the longer he's in here, the dangerous it is. You keep working the jab, but you got to add to it. You, you, every time you get you hesitate, you start to throw the shot, then you hesitate. Let the stop go. The man ain't that dangerous. Finish the shot, go in, and come back with your right hand. You understand? Let your hands go. That's all we're telling you to do right now. Everybody can't talk in the corner. You can do it. One at a fucking time. You can do it. Listen. That's Mike. Mike. Don't worry about it. Be fast. You understand me? Faster. Lewis has been throwing right hands. And Mike Tyson has been eating them. Guy with a shorter neck, a longer neck would have been on the canvas now. That short well, neck of Mike built, Tyson. He's built to absorb punishment, there's no doubt about that. With that 19 inch neck, 230 pounds, and a 5'11 frame, Tyson showing he definitely has a strong chin. Remember, Tyson has not been able to land one straight right hand yet. It's still there waiting. Still there waiting. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has to fight for okay, Fred. All I gave was to, to Mike Tyson was round one. I mean, four, one, one even, 58, 55, Lennox Lewis. Eddie Cotton just warned Lennox Lewis for using an elbow but or a forearm. But in any case, Lennox Lewis just jamming him to death. Uh, the judges can't call it 10-8 because Cotton said no knockdown, so it becomes 10-9. Since he took away a point from Lennox, it becomes 9-9, which is why I have, you know, one round even in this fight. So 58-55, Lewis. All you have to know is that so far, it's all Lewis. Now, Fran, you're getting a little experience on how they work in the big time. <laughs> it's jab, jab, and the referee moves in. Now, it doesn't seem like there's anything on Tyson's left hand anymore. The referee, no matter how many times he pushes him away, he just doesn't have the power now. Lewis, clearly the aggressor inside the ring. Using his 250-pound body to exert force on Tyson. Get out, get out. Come on, get out. Nobody would have given Tyson this much credit to just stay in there, no matter if the fight is not going his way. He stayed in there, so that's a lot more than we expected from Tyson. Come on. He's staying in there. He's bleeding. He's bringing the fight to Lewis. He hasn't backed away at all. He can't take too many more of those right hands. Lewis keeps that up. That fight is gone. Lewis sizing up Tyson. This is by far the worst beating Mike Tyson has ever taken. It's batting practice for Lennox Lewis now. One fast ball after another. He hits him and then still leans on him. I don't know why. I wonder what all those people who think of Tyson as the Tyson of... 10 and 12 years ago are thinking now as they watch him absorb this punishment almost without any return. They tune in for a fight and they're That's getting one. Mean. This no, guy's not me. quitting. He's not listen doing anything. No. No. You understand? Listen to me. You're fighting for the heavyweight championship of war again. You understand? Not many people can do that. You understand? Now look, I'm not going to sit out there and just let you do this. You understand? You have to throw your punches. You understand? For God's sake, you have two hands. You understand? Just let your hands go. Yes, you can. No, let your hands go. Let's talk it up to him. I want your hands to move. You done took this guy's best shot. This man, I got nothing for you. The guy you took his best shot. This guy's getting tired. It's time for you to go to work, brother. Come on, man. Go to work. You take his best shot. George, you call it batting practice. That's what it is. And this is the time maybe your corner should come in and rescue your fighter. It's not going to get any better for him. I have an old warrior that's taking a beating like that. And he doesn't show me anything this round. I'm going to throw the towel in myself. I'm going to keep him on the stool. 
batting practice numbers that Barry Bonds will be impressed with. 31 of 46 for Lennox Lewis and around 7, 67%. Tyson landing just four punches, throwing only 17. Tyson told his corner he'd had enough. I believe, George, you're right. He might have been looking to end the fight on his stool. He, he seems virtually useless for now, just taking punishment, maybe looking and hoping to bait Lewis into one punch. Yeah, I would give him the alternative. Look, Tyson, you put up this round or I'm going to stop the fight. I'm not just going to let your brains get beaten out doing nothing. Like Tyson's stock is falling faster than Enron. Mike Tyson. If you don't finish your guy off, that's what you can expect. You're not doing anything to him, so he'll do something to you. That's another good right hand. Then that mean he's aiming to come back on that right hand on top. Tyson knows he needs a knockout to win. He's never had a knockout past the seventh round. Felix Lewis triple Mike Tyson with a big uppercut. He's called it a knockdown, Seven. thinking that Tyson's knee touched the canvas. I'm not sure I saw that. I don't think I did either, Larry. Lewis unloaded. Lennox Lewis trying to finish off Mike Tyson with one minute left in the eighth round. Mike Tyson highly motivated to come into this fight, hoping that this fight would redeem his, not only his career, but his whole life. Oh, he's doing a good job. He's got heart. Now, he's, you can't take that from him. Big right hand from Lewis, and Tyson goes down for the third time in his career. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's over. Lennox Lewis cements his legacy as one of the best heavyweight champions of this era. Nobody should be able, there's no one in the world can take that from Lennox Lewis now. He is no doubt the best heavyweight of all time. What he's done clearly puts him on top of the heat. He fought a virtually perfect fight, George. There's no doubt about he it. He did everything. He controlled right. it from the beginning. He was patient. He never let Tyson get off. Tyson looked old and slow. And, and you know, George, when you look back at history, at fighters like Tyson from Dempsey to Marciano to Fraser, all of those fighters retired at the age of 32, and they were near the end of the rope at the age of 30. This type of fighter has to put so much effort into fighting the way he does that it's hard to sustain it. Where the boxer punchers like Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. Even Lennox Lewis. And Lennox Lewis and Larry Holmes all were able to fight closer to their mid-30s. It doesn't require that kind of maniacal conditioning to fight that fight. And we just saw a masterpiece of a boxer puncher in Lennox Lewis tonight. All I can say is, that's right. Larry, here's the first knockdown. The knees clearly don't touch the ground. Yeah. Seems to me Eddie Cotton did his best to make this a more even fight than it was. But Lennox Lewis made it an uneven fight. And when you got the power and the reach, it's hard Here's a knockout you. right on the chin. But that was just the coup de grace. It had been preceded by a tremendous amount of punishment. George, you talked about power. How's this? 15 of 19 power shots for Lennox Lewis, 79% in the eighth and final round. I'm telling you, this guy, he's a smooth operator and powerful operator. What can you say but one, two, three, and all that? Lennox Lewis wanted this fight 
to prove that he was the best heavyweight of the 90s. This, in effect, was the, was the last big fight of the 20th century. Let's send it into the ring now for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, the legacy of a three-time heavyweight champion has been embraced as the referee reaches the count of 10. At two minutes, 25 seconds of round number eight, the winner by knockout victory, and still the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the pride of Great Britain, So the boxing match itself was anticlimactic, an execution rather than an explosion. And by Monday, water cooler talk would center not so much on the details of Lewis's demolition of an outclassed opponent as on the bizarre post-fight interview conducted by both fighters in the ring with Jim Gray. Mike, have you changed your opinion now of Lennox Lewis? Well, no. Um, believe it or not, I've known Lennox for like 15, 16 years. We've always been friends, but in, comp but in competition, in competition, in competition, the best man has to win. We have to do everything we can. I'm happy for him to give me a fight. The payday was wonderful. I really appreciate it. And if you could be kind enough, I'd love to do it again. I think I could beat you if we try one more time. Mike, what gives you any indication that you could beat him after this performance? And was it a lack of quality opponents going into this uh, well, I, that I, hurt you? I explained before I needed two more fights or three more fights to fight him. But um, I believe if I would have took that route, the fight probably would have never happened. He wouldn't have waited for me. And again, he was just splendid, a masterful boxer. I used to take my hand off to you. And he said, please, if you can do, give me one more chance, I'd be greatly appreciative. Are you interested in that at all, based on the way you, you yeah, controlled this fight? You know, I just wanted to complete my legacy. You know, everybody was saying that, you know, this fight is going to uh, count on my legacy. So I just wanted to prove to the people that, you know, I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet. No guy test this man. You prove that right now. You were quite annoyed. You had some very derogatory things to say about Mike coming into this fight. You said you had to win this fight to clean up boxing. Do you feel you've accomplished that? Well, I just showed, I showed boxing, you know, who's the best in the world. I went out there and showed them I'm a pugilist specialist. I can adapt to any style. And, you know, he showed me one style that a lot of people didn't think I was going to be able to deal with. But I was able to deal with it. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to get away from my job, but nobody gets away from my job. Mike, you behave tonight. Everybody. His biggest fans, brother. Andy Stewart, say that again. I was telling Mike, I'm still one of his biggest fans. He's given me so many thrills, man. You know, go back to Roderick Moore, you remember? My friend Roger. Mike, you've given all of us a lot of excitement. Most thank you. In the last 50 years. Thank you very much. I just, it was just beautiful. I'm just so happy you gave me a chance. Nobody wanted to give me a chance. Don King didn't want to give me a chance. I'm just happy someone gave me a chance. Thank you. Champ and Mike, how sorry are you guys that this fight did not occur many years ago when you were at your best and probably you weren't quite as old either? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, you know, heavyweights, heavyweights mature at different different times. I would say Mike Tyson matured at 19. He was, nothing was standing in his way at that time. He ruled, he ruled the planet at that time. But I'm like fine wine. I come along later on and, you know, I learned my, my art and w I went along and just took my time. And I came along and just ruled, I'm, I'm ruling now. Mike, are you sorry this fight didn't take place years ago? It wasn't meant to be. I've known Lennox ever since he was 16, 15 years old. I have mad respect. Everything I said was in um, proposition for promoting the fight. He knows I love him and his mother, and I know if he thinks I don't have respect and don't love him, he's crazy. So you're saying a lot of the behavior, Mike, is just to sell tickets, and, and that doesn't represent well, your true feelings? Well, he knows who I am, and, and he knows I'm not disrespectful. I, I respect this man as a brother. He knew me ever since his friend Bernie and Cuss were together, and he not I have the much respect for him. Like I said before, he's a magnificent, a prolific fighter, and he should continue fighting. I would just love for him to give me another shot. How important was it for you tonight, Mike, to come out here and be a sportsman and behave in the ring? Oh, no, it was very but I, I said I love and respect him too much to do anything disrespectful to him, and he knows that. And for him to think that is absolutely crazy. About 30 minutes after that surreal piece of theater, in an interview I did myself in Tyson's dressing room, the beaten star seemed to have changed his mind about a rematch.
Mike, I want to start by saying that uh, I've never been more impressed with you as a sportsman than was the case tonight. You fought a clean and honorable fight, and you were utterly sportsmanlike in the ring afterward. Were you conscious all night of the fact that you were on your best behavior? Um, not really, but um, he the gentleman. I, I knew um, going in this fight, I wasn't fighting a dirty fighter. And the reason I conducted myself like that because um, the fighters I fought, Bolta, um, Norris, and Holyfield, I believe they, they, they fought me a little dirty. And um, I just sometimes I overdid it sometimes. and. To Took it to the next level and made it so apparent and overt that I had the re reputation of a dirty fighter, and um, it's okay. You know, I've been through a lot uh, with Don King and these guys, and it just really um, transformed my behavior and my conduct. But um, things are going well now, and I'm just see it for the wonderful fight. This guy is there's no way I could ever be. He's just too big and too strong, and he just fought a, a very he's a very consummate fighter, and I just appreciate him giving me a shot to fight for the title. That's honorable respect. I think we all knew that in order to beat him, you would have to be fast. You would have to throw combinations. You would have to go to the body and do all the things that made you so great back in the late 1980s. Why weren't you able to do it? Um, he had hurt me early, and I was just trying to keep the pressure. And he has, um, he has kept me hurt from on from the from the early to the end of the fight. But he was fighting. He was fighting great, and he just basically wore me down. Is his right hand the biggest punch you've ever felt? Um, no, I just couldn't see it. You know what I mean? I just couldn't see it. I could take a great shot. I just couldn't see the punch. Mike, um, there's there's a great moment in the ring after the fight when during the post-fight interview, you very tenderly reached out and wiped blood from Lennox's cheek while he was answering a question. Deep in your heart, do you feel as though he's your friend? No, oh, I've been friends with him for 15 years. You know what I mean? We're just like, you know, I, I fly pigeons, right? And this is the, a good equation. These pigeons live with each other for 10 to 15 years, right? But when I throw feed down, they kill each other to get it. And it's the same way with fighters. We love and respect each other, but we need, we, we, we're like mercenaries. We need that money. You know, we need to, we need to be the best. You know what I mean? Money means nothing. I mean, money means nothing sometimes, but sometimes greatness is even more important than money. The contract calls for a rematch, although Lennox has the right to take another fight before doing so. If, in fact, the rematch takes place, what will you do differently? I don't know. He fought great, man, and I don't really think I could beat that guy if he continues to fight like that. But like I said, I'll fight him again, and I'll fight him with all the great aptitude to win. I won't never quit, but I'll fight to beat him. If you were him, and you've been at that pinnacle, knowing what he's accomplished now and the joy he must feel at getting this victory, would you consider retiring? Um, it's basically up to the fighter. The fighter, especially how he feels, you know what I mean? If he wants to retire, he should retire. Or some, you know, real fighters really never retire. You know, we, we hang out to the last moment, at least I do. You get as much as you can, and you get your body beat as, as, much, as little as possible, but, you know what I mean, you try to get as much as you can out of your body. One last question. Even though you were beaten, did it feel good? Was it satisfying to be back at the top of the division, in with the best, instead of fighting guys like Nielsen and Francis and Savarese? I'm just happy to be talking to you, even though you said things. And I know this whole game is basically a political beast. And um, I'm just happy to be talking with you, Bobby Chez, um, Jim Brown. It was just happy seeing your guys across the table. Hey, baby, be a good boy, okay? Be good. You're going to talk to these guys one day. This is Miguel Tyson. Yeah, he's going to be a great fighter one day. I want him to be a fighter. You know? He's already throwing punches with the right hand, oh, Mike. Come on, be a good boy. You'll be nice, okay? Say hi to Jim Lampy. Hey, we were happy to have you back too, Mike. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much.